Hello everybody, and welcome to my video. This is a Hollow Knight challenge. Obviously. Why else would you be here? Today's challenge is none other than Hollow Knight, but I can only swing my nail down. Now, you might be wondering, how exactly does that make for any challenge whatsoever? Well, you're about to see. Hopefully you stick around till the end of the video. So without further ado, I'll begin to explain all of the intricate details of this challenge. To begin, the first thing I would like to address is mods. Yes, I am currently using mods. However, the benefit of these mods is that I was able to make it physically impossible for me to swing my nail left, right, or up. So, instead of being able to add some dumb rule where once or twice, when I really need to, I was able to swing my nail, or, oh gosh, I swung it accidentally, whatever am I going to do? Oh well, guess I'll just continue the run. This way, I can't even do that. Hopefully, this makes this challenge significantly more interesting to the viewers. That was my goal at the end of the day. The other mod that I'm using is QOL, which if you don't know, this mod basically just overhauls the game and makes a lot of tedious things go faster. For example, the very long and arduous animation that the stag has when he comes to a stag station doesn't exist using QOL. This just cuts down on extra waiting time that would be otherwise boring to watch as a viewer and boring to play. Now, if anybody has a real problem with this, just, I don't know, get a life, man. Nothing really happens to the difficulty of the challenge other than wasting my time. So that's why I decided to use QOL. I hope that you all can understand. Now, as my past self is leaving King's Pass, I might as well explain what exactly I was doing in King's Pass. Well, first of all, this run is going to need a lot of Geo, and you're going to see why pretty soon. So I collected most of the Geo Rocks in King's Pass, left a couple here and there because they were a little bit too far out of the way. I also got Fury of the Fallen because, you know, nail damage is pretty important, and it's not that hard to get. Fury of the Fallen is going to be a very big help for a large majority of the rest of this video, as will one other charm that I will for now leave nameless so as to leave you all in suspense. After a quick chat with Elderbug, because I'm not a monster, the real challenge begins. Crossroads, the first barrier. And oh boy, when I say it's a barrier, I mean it is a barrier. As a matter of fact, this might be one of the worst barriers in the entire game. And it's all due to one particular spot. Now, anybody who has played this game for as long as I have probably can think of that one spot with a little bit of time. I'll give you a hint. It's an ancestral mound. <laughs> Haven't gotten it yet? There's one specific piece of wood in Ancestral Mound that you need either left, right, or up slash in order to break with your nail. This one piece of wood caused me so much grief. And you're about to see the journey. The journey of one man and a piece of wood. And a couple thousand geo. The vast majority of Crossroads is quite easy, really. It's just geo farming, finding every geo rock, getting as much geo as I possibly can. Really, it's just all about geo. Or at least it's really just all about geo for this part. But again, you'll see why in a second. For now, though, I hope that you are pleased by my epic gameplay. This Aspirina might have not been my best, but. I didn't die, so that's a plus. Having finished what might be the hardest arena in the entire game, it is time for the first sick epic trick of the run. Feast your eyes on this skip first try. That, ladies and gentlemen, that is pure skill, without a shadow of a doubt. Oh, 
Okay, well with that out of the way, we have one fourth of a mass shard collected. And again, this is not the easiest of challenges. And I figured, might as well get some mass shards. These aren't too hard. Doesn't hurt, right? Don't worry, folks, all of this damage is very much intentional, I promise. It was definitely not just me rushing, because I didn't want this video to be 300 hours long. Finally, after beating that room, we get to the Stag Station. I love this guy. He's the greatest. I mean, I didn't feel the need to talk to him, but I love him anyway. Now, finally, it is time for what most of you have probably been waiting for. A boss fight. If you could really even call False Knight a boss. Regardless, it's time for slaughter. Other than some missed swings, this really wasn't that different from any other normal false knight boss fight. Due to false knight having such low health, sometimes I would get in and get some extra damage off by hitting him while he was in his flailing phase. I decided that the damage that I was dealing outweighed the damage I was taking. And I was right, as you can see right here. Or right there. There really isn't much to commentate about this fight. It's not very interesting. I mean, it's False Knight. And there you go. That was False Knight. A boss fight. Picking up City Quest, obviously, because why would I not? And this Geo right here, 200 Geo, is very appreciated. Once again, Geo is king. Now, some of you might have caught on to why I need this much Geo, but for those of you who don't know yet, you'll soon find out. And now it is time for the biggest tease of all time. Vengeful Spirit. That right there, that's the face of somebody who knows better than to take the bait and get softlocked. But it's okay. Because past me had other plans. Thank you. 
it's time to fight, in my opinion, a significantly harder boss than False Knight, and that is obviously Grossmother. Now, in normal gameplay, Grossmother is significantly easier than False Knight, there's no doubt about it. However, when you only have downswing, Grossmother actually starts to become a pretty big challenge. Now, that's not saying much, Grossmother is still incredibly easy, but she's harder than normal and by a sizable amount of that. Also, I don't know what exactly is happening here, but Gruz Mother seemed to get stuck in the corners a lot more than usual. She must have smelled something nice up there. I don't know. But freaked me out a little bit in my run. Thought she was gonna blast off like Team Rocket right at my face. But she didn't, and I beat her. Before I continue, I would just like to say, screw this one grudge specifically, what the hell, man? Anyway, for those of you who have seen low percent runs or anything along those lines, you know that it is totally possible to kill the balders with long nail. Now, granted, it is very precise and not easy at all, but it is possible. However, I can't do that, unfortunately, because it requires you to have left slash, and I don't have left slash. So, I save Sly and continue along my merry way. And now finally it is time to reveal my master plan. Lumafly Lantern. For those of you who hadn't realized yet, there you go. And for those of you who have, good for you. Regardless, Lumafly Lantern costs 1800 Geo. That is a lot of Geo, especially for early game. Unfortunately, I only have access to Crossroads. So, it is time to farm. And there's a lot of farming.
At this point, I decided it was finally time for a small break from the grind to kill Brooding Moloch. Once again, masks in this challenge are going to be very helpful, and I decided that I wanted a sixth mask as soon as possible. And Brooding Moloch is one of the earliest ways to get a mask. As a whole, this boss is not that difficult, but it is the first boss that actually required a bit of strategy. After coming up here to collect this, what I believe to be final Georock in the entirety of Crossroads, I make my way back down and start the fight with Brooding Moloch after collecting some soul, of course. As I am fighting Brooding Moloch, I'll explain my strategies, if you can even call them that. Once again, this fight as a whole is not very difficult. However, with Down Slash, the only real opportunity you have to hit Brooding Moloch is when he's spitting his infection like that, right there. That is the one time in this fight where you can consistently hit him without getting damaged. However, as you'll soon see, there is another small window of opportunity that you can hit Brooding Moloch with. And that comes in the form of his jumping. You can get hits off like that. Now, those hits are generally a lot harder than hits like this. However, they obviously deal damage, and as long as you can get in a rhythm, they're not that difficult. So I went for them most of the time. Healing here is not the most important thing of all time. However, I figured there's nothing else that I can use my soul on. Might as well use it to heal just to be safe. Sometimes you can get lucky and he will shoot his infection in that pattern multiple times in a row. However, in this specific time, I kind of messed up and didn't get as many hits off as I could have. And also sometimes you can just say, screw it, I'm gonna continue hitting him even though he's shooting his random infection shots. And sometimes that works. And in the span of less than two minutes, Brooding Moloch is defeated. And I'm halfway to a sixth mask. Unfortunately, that means it's back to the grind.
after over an hour of grinding, I have enough Geo to buy a Lumafly Lantern. This is a huge relief. Now, while I was scrolling through the options to find Lumafly Lantern, you might have seen something a little interesting in Slice Shop. Left slash, up slash, and right slash are all being sold for relatively low amounts of Geo. However, I will obviously not be buying them, and this occurs because I'm using Randomizer, specifically Cursed Nail, to get rid of those options from the start of my run. Obviously, those upgrades had to appear somewhere due to the nature of the Randomizer in general, and the game decided to put them in Sly Shop. Finally, after almost an hour, I have made it to the second area of the game. Not Green Path, not Fungal Wastes, Crystal Peaks. And I'm here for one of two reasons. Crystal Heart, if it's even possible, or access to City of Tears. As you can see by my little dancing, this is a very happy moment for me. I'm finally free. As I make my way through the rest of Crystal Peak, keep in mind, platforming sections are not going to be changed very much. This challenge only removes my nail slashes. And down pogo is really the only nail slash that you use in platforming sections anyway. As you can see, there is much indecision with my next choice. Do I go to resting grounds? Or do I make my way to Crystal Heart and hope that it's possible without dash? Eventually, I decide to collect some more Geo because apparently I didn't get enough of that in Crossroads. Unfortunately, I seem to have forgotten that you need Mantis Claw to get back up. So, unfortunately, I had to take the long way back. But no matter. Now, the decision lies here. Do I continue forward? Do I go to resting grounds? Or do I double back and get Crystal Heart? At first, I think it's much easier to give up on Crystal Heart and go to resting grounds than it is to give up on resting grounds and go to Crystal Heart. But then I realized resting grounds is definitely accessible, while Crystal Heart definitely has a chance of failure. So I decide to go to resting grounds. However, as I stand at the edge of this large pit and dance, something dawns on me. Getting back is going to be a pain in the ass because I decided not to use Bench Warp. However, I take the plunge anyway. Or not. I actually chickened out and decided to try going back, and then I realized that I was going to die to this tiny bug. So I chickened out once again and decided to take the plunge for real this time. This marks a big jump in progress. Dream Nail is huge. I finally have something required to beat the game. After grinding for so long, getting something that actually progresses the game feels very good. And if you didn't know, falling off the edge here actually spawns the platforms faster.
I would like to make a quick thank you to Team Cherry for making this section possible without Dash or Claw. I don't know if it was done intentionally, but it certainly helped me out right now. So thank you, Team Cherry. After blazing through the dialogue, I finally pick up Tree Nail and feel some sense of accomplishment. Something I have been lacking for the past hour. And as I wake up and do not talk to the seer at all, I go and get the stag. Now it is here that I seemed to realize something. Wait a second, there's a charm in Resting Grounds that might be helpful to my cause. That charm is Dream Shield. If you remember all the way back at the beginning of this video, I said there would be another charm besides Fury of the Fallen that was going to be very useful to me during this run. That charm is Dream Shield. I had completely forgotten about this charm, because nobody really ever uses Dream Shield. It's always relegated to the back of the pack, only being used rarely in summon builds. But today, it gets the glory it deserves. At this point, I realize something. There's a trick with Dream Shield that, while very hard to pull off, is humanly doable. It is possible to kill Elder Baldurs with Dream Shield. It is a frame-perfect trick that you have to do 12 times, but I decided I'd give it a shot after getting a mask, or at least checking. Unfortunately, as it turns out, I don't have enough Geo to buy my last Mass Shard. Clearly, I did not grind enough. As I make my way to the entrance to Green Path, trepidation begins, and I go see how to grow father first. This is my third mass shard. After saying hi to the grubs, I continue on my quest to, to defeat the Elder Balder once and for all. Unfortunately, as you will see very soon, this trick lives up to its frame-perfect difficulty. And there are some other complications to doing it as well. Elder Balder spits out mini Balders, and unfortunately these mini Balders activate my Dream Shield. Dream Shield has a cooldown of about three seconds, and waiting for that cooldown after it accidentally hits a Balder is incredibly annoying. Over the course of around 10 minutes, I didn't hit him once. The rest of this footage is a fraction of the amount of time that I spent trying to kill this Elder Balder with Dream Shield.
Ja wieder, 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 wieder. And finally, I say, screw it. This is not worth it. I decide that there are still other avenues I can attempt, rather than wasting 10 hours trying to defeat a single Elder Balder. There's one more idea stirring around in my mind. What if Dream Shield can break that wooden plank? The only thing stopping me from progression. The chances were slim, but I decided to give it a shot regardless. So I finally pick up Vengeful Spirit, which has been waiting for me here since almost the very beginning of this challenge. And as I pass out and wake up on the other side, I give my last idea a shot. Unfortunately, it didn't work, as expected. As I look down in sadness, I decide to try the only other thing I could think of. Saving and quitting. Even though I said I wouldn't, in order to complete the challenge, I decided to try to break my rule. However, not even this worked. Now, one last Hail Mary came to me. And as you'll soon find out, it worked. And a very sad event took place right after. After collecting enough soul, I vengeful spirited the wooden board. And in that moment, I realized that I had wasted an hour of my life farming for Lumafly Lantern. When I could have just vengeful spirited the wooden plank. And this, my friends, is the big twist. After this, most everything proceeds smoothly. Having vengeful spirit makes the other Elder Balder trivial. And with QOL, he dies in one hit. After leaving the Snail Shaman that pulled a fast one on me, I head to Green Path. Finally. It's time to continue the game. Once again, I'd like to remind you that this challenge only removes left swing, up swing, and right swing. Spells are fair game. Before I decided to fight the Elder Balder and continue the Green Path, I decided to farm just a bit more Geo and buy that last Mass Shard that I wasn't able to purchase before. This is mainly due to the fact that these first four Mass Shards, the two in Sly's shop, one from Grudfather and one from Brooding Moloch, are really the only accessible Mass Shards for a good while into the game. So with barely enough Geo to purchase the Mass Shard, I head into Sly Shop and say hi Optimus one Geo. last time. The Nail Swings that I will never be able to get. 
and leave with one extra hit point. And now, for real this time, I head to Green Path. After the arduous and strenuous time I had with this balder, killing him feels really good. And I continue. Getting to listen to the Green Path soundtrack has never felt so good. Once again, collecting some extra geo. At this point, I just think that I've programmed my brain to collect every geo rock I can see, due to the trauma of Forgotten Crossroads. And as Dream Shield freaks the hell out, after hitting what I can only assume to be either background objects or birds, I open my inventory, show off everything that I have, my current progress. And end the first part. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you will be here for the rest of my journey. See you in part two.